I'm going to try to make this really short. Um, I want to also make it a bit practical where we have a couple of people who could, you know, just come up and tell me, you know, where you are to your stage, what you've done, and I can use, you know, that same thing, what you've done today, your stage, the stage of your career to give you ideas and initiatives. So it's actually practical, meaning you can go after the space and try out those things. Um, there are many things that will be shared today, but many of them might be general. So um, when I know which stage of career you are, what you've done, it then becomes easier to help you tailor or sort of brainstorm alongside with you on a couple of things you could do. I also want us to note that, yeah, there is no perfect content on storytelling. Um, yeah, I think it all starts from there. Even the guides, there is no one formula on this is how to tell your story and you get everything right. No. Uh, but the first goal and the objective of this page is to establish the importance. A lot of people actually are missing the, out on this. Um, they work on projects, they do quite a lot of quite a number of things. And they are not getting as much as the word they should for the same effort that would have rewarded them more. Um, this is not just for beginners. At every stage of your career, there are things you need to do to actually story tell your effort, your both your skill and your growth effort um, to gain visibility within the organization you are. Uh, this has really worked for me. And I will share practical examples of some of the things I've done in the past within the organization, um, which is helping me a lot today. So uh, if, in case you are just joining this for the very first time, my name is Olara Waju. I work as a senior cloud advocate at Microsoft. I'm proud to join Microsoft. I have worked in the past in different roles around data, as a data analyst, as a data scientist. I've worked as a data governance and management you know, specialist as well. I've also driven the adoption of Microsoft Power Platform solutions, not just dry, but I've created a lot of enterprise solutions uh, that is powered by Power Automate, Power Apps, and combinations of other Microsoft 365 apps and services. So um, because I have love for community, I also want to um, take this moment to appreciate everyone. It just like I know all of you, you know, because we that, that is our close and one of the family that we are. Uh, everyone that I've taken time to join, I appreciate you all. You, you know, those are retweeted. So this is not just about, you know, uh, me. I will appreciate contribution from everyone. I just thought of putting this out there because it's easy to say something, but getting things done is the most hardest part. So um, uh, because I said this up doesn't mean it is my space at the end. Um, you know, I will appreciate everyone, you know, as you come up to share or add to everything I'll be sharing. So good. So let's start with what I, you know, have here. First, my, my story. When I started working, um, precisely 20, you know, uh, that wasn't when I started working, but at tw 2019, I had my first appraiser. You know, when you, started, when you start working, you start doing appraiser to talk about your performance. And I had, you know, I, I, it, it was good, but it wasn't that good for me. Uh, I had an expectation, you know, to be promoted and... And then the manager, my manager then told me, I won't pass a lot of feedback. You know, you did this well, you did that. Then he said, when you deserve a promotion, you are not the one to ask. The people will speak for you. People who will see what you have done. They will say, yes, this guy deserves a promotion. So you just clamoring and hearing only your voice about promotion is not there. So you think you've done well, yes, but you must make people know what you've done, the value of what you've done so much that they can, you know, speak for you. I did not know the value of, you know, in this case now, it, I'm not hunting for a job. I'm within an organization and I wanted to get promoted. I was doing well. And that year, I missed that level of promotion. Uh, even though I have an accelerated journey, it was that moment. 
I was sad and happy. I was sad because, you know, ah, it's December now. Give me that. I, of course, I still got an excellent, you know, appraiser. But that push that incrementally just push, not incrementally, exponentially raised my salary and all those kind of things. Ah, then I said to myself, so I have more work to do. The fact that you are good and you are delivering great is not enough. So how can you tell, you know, and create visibility about your effort? Without literally stepping on toes now, it's not playing off his politics. It's making your skill and your effort to count for you in such a way that people are actually there advocating for you. So I'm still going to talk to beginners. You know, people are looking to tell a story that can get them in a job. Um, this is just about someone who is employed already. It is when you are employed, you now realize the value that you know, the career ladder is a different thing entirely. You need some form of mentorship. You now appreciate the value of mentorship, how to navigate each of those roles, or even going for a bigger role. What it takes to get promoted. Um, in the space of three years in that organization, I was actually promoted over people who have been there for over seven, eight years, in all honesty. Uh, I, not be, I'm not mocking them. It's just when I understood that element, I was able to be well positioned. A year after that time, I tell you, in all honesty, my name was in the mouth of almost everybody in the organization. Ah, I saw it was like magic. When for nobody, I did not even think I was the most exceptional employee of the year. Uh, beyond being exponentially promoted, salary, everything. <laughs> what is happening here? Just a year ago, the same person, you know, could not even get that level of promotion and uh, because who knows what you are doing. And all of a sudden, my name was in the mouth of everyone because I have been able to do something differently. I found ways to story tell my effort, my contribution, and not within the organization so much that there is a lot of visibility. Okay, so um, I just shared this. I have several other career stories. Even within Microsoft today, when I joined, I have learnings that I could also share, share which has helped me uh, where I am right now. So let's move to, uh, let me just, after sharing my story, then let's just, uh, let me just set this uh, base again. Here, storytelling for me, it's all about creating impactful visibility. You know, you are creating your visibility that could help you get the next level. Either get a job, either move from a job to the other, either get a, you know, a promotion, that kind of you know progress that is what i want to speak about today you know uh, you could actually interpret storytelling as a topic in different ways but i really want to touch how you can use the power of storytelling of your learning effort of your skill and make it count to achieve any of those objectives so first it is a personal journey and that is why uh, what applies to one A might not directly applies to B, but you could try out some of those concepts and might also work for you. You should, anytime you think about storytelling, you should have an objective in mind and explore several means to achieve that objective. And I'll be laying examples. First, I realized in the past, I work on projects uh, 2019, thereabout, no, 2018 and mid part of 2019. I work on project, but I don't like presenting or showing. Anytime it is presentation, I just shy away. I don't want people, ah, no, no. I am skillful, I will do the work. But when it comes to our team presenting, I don't really want to take anything. Let someone else take it. Yes, let them take it. And that's more reason. And before you know what is there, people just think, that, oh, in this team, this is the person that is doing most of the work because they are the one making that presentation. So I, I knew you know, vividly that there are means through which I can storytell my own effort. The, okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm going there to share what I did. It wasn't a fight in my team. It wasn't anything. It's still the same way we work, but I was able to, to explore more ways. But I have a very clear objective. I want people to see exactly my contribution. I want, you know, I want to tell a story about the things I'm doing to help other people outside my job roles. I want to share a story how I'm enabling 
you know, other people to be successful in their role. I want to share a story how I'm contributing to the success of other two different things. You know, I, you can enable other people to be successful by doing something that they can then, you know, just pick what you have done and use it and be more successful. You could contribute directly to their own success and you could also do your own work. So I need to tell each of these stories and I will speak through one or two things that I was doing then to showcase this. You need to evaluate what success is for you. So um, I want to get promoted the next year. Then that was my you know, goal. And how can people know me? How can people get to know, you know what I'm doing? Or what are uh, there for the skill, my maturity, uh, so that they can, yes, this guy demonstrated, has demonstrated the capability to be in this new role. You know, people can easily say, oh, I, I think this guy can do it. Oh, Allah can do it. Oh, Allah can do it. Right. One of the things I did first was to be more open to presentation. So when it was my team, this I would tell them, um, guys, uh, I can take it. Oh, let's divide the sessions. I will take this part, we we'll take this part. I wasn't that comfortable or convenient with making presentation, but I have to. And one of the things I also did then was to be confident. Also, the one you've done, be confident to share it. And what people respect most when you are doing that is not, is not telling the uh is not telling the story of um we will do it. We will do it or we are planning, we are planning. In my presentation, I don't talk about we are planning when I'm making presentation. If that thing is not done, say we, are, we will look into it after this. Because I need to be very objective. If you, oh, you are that kind of person, anytime you are talking, you are doing that, you are saying we are planning, we are planning, that is not so good. Have good responses. Either you are looking into it or you've done something. We have reached out to these people. The next line of action, by next week, they've sent this to us and we'll be able to implement it. It's different from we are planning, we are planning, and all this. So I started taking presentation to talk. I gained that visibility there. Two, I started community within my organization. Why, when I wrote my first certificate exam, Microsoft, I sent email to my entire group, copy everybody, told them I just passed the certification. And this certificate is available for because we all share similar interests. We're working in similar category. So they can also look at it. These lessons I learned from... That was a leadership trait, spawning others to growth. As simple as that is, I was making impact. I shared email. You know, when I go to an event, I will send email and copy everyone. This is the key takeaway. Summary email, not something too long. Summary email. This is the event I attended. These are the key summary from there. How can our team use this? No, we could just do this. I might not know how to do it, but I can just make that one or two, three suggestions. Not to every time, not every day, not every week, but those kind of things. Today, before I left the organization, over 25 people started taking that certifications. And then I think we have a total of um, 30 or 40 certifications that you know people pass, all because I spoiled them to that group. No, there's no way they will not come back and say, you know, when they are telling their story, when I last sent me, I said I will also write this certification. When they start hearing that story, what I will have done on my own. Now people are having that visibility. Um, it is also important that you use multiple means. I also started training, just free. You know, if you're available, I, I train people within the organization just for free, you know. And um, people who have interest in, you know, I've been wanting to learn about data, I've wanted to do this, okay, okay. You know, once in a month we meet as a community in the organization and then we learn. And that was creating, people get to know who this guy is. I can have, you know, exact that confidence in it. But let me quickly divide, uh, digress a little, not just digression. I just want to speak to beginners today and be specific because many people are thinking, you oh, know, I'm building project today. How can I story tell? I think that's what I'm interested in. Not really, you know, this one you are sharing uh, because many people could not relate. I need a job to even get to that level. Let me get a job first. And uh, thereafter, I can, you know, start looking at, um, okay, how to, drive some of these things. I will still come back to the professional one, but let's quickly move to your, you know, those who are working on project. Examples of what you can do to story tell your project. First, be mindful of your time, of the timing. So I have, I treated with this. I have made tweets sometimes that will go and delete that tweet. Because I just realized, oh, the timing that I shared that tweet People, I see someone posting project 
2 a.m., 3 a.m., is it the U.S. people you are targeting to respond to your project tweet? Or, you know, all the Indians that maybe they are just crossing to the early morning? Or is it the Nigerians that are sleeping at that moment? You know, so the timing matters. I will have these ideas. I see weapons have opened up and I will make that tweet. But, hey, I will realize more. This thing is better in the morning or towards 11 a.m. or 12. Yeah, even if there's a video, today and yesterday, I deleted one reel. I shared that reel since yesterday, or more, no single view like this. Eh? See, this thing that is so inspiring like this, no single view. I went back home and deleted it. Say, I will repost it. I know that I'm doing the afternoon when the timing is favorable. Same thing on LinkedIn. So being mindful of the time can actually help you. Some, some people, it's just because they did that tweet or that post at the right time. No. And the right piece. You just put at the right time, just see one like, two like, boom. That visibility comes in. And before you know what is there, you know, you could get the objective. People are, you know, passing comment, passing feedback, or, you know, uh, visibility to the potential employer, or someone to say, oh, I think this guy is doing well. Those kind of things. Number two, you can compare your first project the where you are now. Take, for example, someone who has done data analysis, you are into data analysis. You built your first dashboard maybe two months or three months ago. And now you have built the fifth dashboard or the fourth dashboard. Write a story about those ones. Be reflective. Ah, when you built your first, first uh, where I am or where I started and where we are now, it's still in progress. Put those two dashboards beside each other. Just write a few things. What has changed? The first one, the second one. What have you done to improve over each other now? When I started before, I knew nothing about this. And then I even laughed at myself looking back. When you could compare where you are and where you're know, you coming from, as simple, as short as that story is, it goes a long way. It's a reflection. It's a story. People see that you've done two things. Another story, another one, how I built this dashboard. So people share dashboard, but you don't show some tips that help you when you are building it. How I built the dashboard is a thread. It might not even be a thread. It doesn't have to be too long. Share the dashboard. On a single effort, you can write many stories about it. How I built this dashboard, or on that dashboard, because you use a donut chart or another chart, you can even bring a donut chart or a different chart and put them beside each other in a single design and just tweet and say, uh, this or this, which one will you prepare? I'm working on a project. And I'm doing a personal project. I'm thinking of this visual or this visual. You just make some comment and remarks about them. As simple as that, people start tweeting or start liking. That visibility starts, you know, coming in place. There's a guy, Sahil, on LinkedIn. He's a student of architecture in uh, India. I, since 2022, I used to follow that guy. I take a lot of inspiration. Sahil Ali Samani. Um, I'm going to share his, his LinkedIn URL. This guy is doing a lot of things. He's a UIUS guy. He's, talking, he's still a student. And he has done a lot of internship. What the guy has done most is anytime he's building something, he will just bring one and two and compare them. Which UI is more accurate? This design format or this design format, I'm telling you, some of those posts, we have over 200 and something thousand reactions. I will share. I will share. So you all see. And I studied, how is this guy doing? This simple concept is not even the finished work. It's not even everything. So the same learning effort, bring one visual or you are doing machine learning, you know, uh, or you are doing product design or product management. The concept you are learning, compare the scenarios. You know, it's still in progress. So you are not yet done, but you are just like, oh, this or this. I think this will work for this, this work for that. Or why I choose this over this. You know, the decisions you made in your project, you can even share what informed it. Why you choose this over this? And people start passing their feedback. On a single learning effort, you can do quite a lot. Three, um, share a story about understanding of a concept and how you applied it. If you do any form of analysis, work on is it a particular type of concept in, in your web development project or this thing is, you know, that concept matters. If it is advanced DAX, time intelligent DAX, how I use time intelligent in my report. Put the Power BI report there, the screenshot, 
then share in just a few lines. People will want to, a lot of people need to know how concepts are being applied. So if you do not understand the concept you are applying, the work you've done, you are not showcasing your skill. You can tell a story uh, about um, when I knew I have, when I knew I have mastered DAX, DAX, for example, when I knew I have understood OOP. As simple as that, you can share the project that you did and what you did to now tell yourself, ah, I think I know this. Those reflections, those moments, those tipping points in your career transition or skill transition journey, sharing them as a story, overall, you have even, you have, you've gone past someone who, who people will be questioning, do you know this or not? If you can be sharing, you know, when you knew you know this, as simple as that is what happened, what project did you work done? Was it late at night? Was it a video you went to and you find out, finally, I know this. Share that experience. Because why sharing it? Some people, they've gone through it, but they don't know what it is. Your explanation might be what we answer them, not even the long-form video they've watched. And the moment you're able to, you're starting, you're imparting some, that story alone shows you are living your life as usual. You are doing your things. You are still learning. You know, you are still but you are contributing a lot and you're establishing your own understanding and confidence. And that is really what is making a lot of difference. It's not how long you are committed to learning. Good to learn. It's also good to start telling that story. Be creative. Sometimes you do some things. If tweet does not work, try a one form of video. A five seconds or 10 seconds on real TikTok or because you are trying to explore how this message can go out. Yes, that is the objective. So everything does not have to start and end on Twitter. Everything does not have to start and end on LinkedIn or, you know, IG. But find out. Explore them. As you see me today, it's good, though, but I come on all this platform as a creator and not as a consumer. I work, I get inspired, I work, I learn, I come over this. That's why I don't, you know, touch many tweets because it's not my fault. I only see them when I come there. And it's only those ones I saw my timeline, I will interact, engage with. And then I drop them there. So no matter how, what you think you know today, add to this audience. Be a creator as well. I'm not for, I'm not, you, some people might be, you know, I'm introvert. But you, when you're even telling your story, you're already creating content for others too. And make sure it's your own story you are you are you are you are, you are telling um i also want to uh, another form of 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 you know storytelling your effort is speaking to an industry so uh, if you say oh um music you know gift or jabulu for example god is first you know internship pro by writing he has written that tweet, that medium post he did the exploratory data analysis about the sport. And then he was writing about it on Twitter as well. And the co-founder of a you know, US startup reached out to him. And they were in CBG analytics. They were into sport analytics. And just because he wrote that thing. So industry-specific use cases can also help you. Yes, you've just done something. You can even coin it and say, this data is for clinical analytics, clinical company, clinical health company, you know, fictitious company, and assuming this is what they do, by just changing the context of your work, makes a lot of sense now to people in that space. Uh, David, I will share something today, a screenshot of how a guy posted different job roles in data, and someone just went, hey, there's this kind of analytics, went ahead and updated his own CV, his CV. And has gotten invited uh, on LinkedIn, you know, uh, to via LinkedIn for an interview, just because the new job title matched something that you know he never thought that role existed. But people are looking for it because it's industry specific. So be free to you know uh, create you know features. Uh, uh, business on top of your project. If you are good with web design, can you just call it a business today? Is it fi finance business? Is it um, financial financial sector? Is it a uh, ed tech? Is it ed tech? You know, just call this. It's not just a sign up form. It should be signed up for something. My sign up, you know, application or you know, a password check application for this. Put a sector to it, and just type one or two stories. I want to stop briefly here.
um, just to say, I want to take more. I want to take people who are willing to tell us where they are in their journey, and then we could just say, do this and this. Uh, because I'm really very practical around this. I know a lot of ideas that I could share. Uh, if you say this is what I've done, if you are willing to do that, just make a request to speak. Uh, just tell us what you've done. This is where you are. Before you know what is there, you will get your own recommended, you know, activities that you could do to just uh, project you. And you will see a lot of people will also learn through that rather than just uh, speaking and sharing tips, sharing tips. I don't want to do too much of that. I need people who, you know, can come up and um, um, share idea, uh, how to this submission, uh, or also, you know, tell us about their story so that uh, in case they need recommendation. I see... Uh, industry expert are joining already. <laughs> Tina and Rachel, <laughs> thank you guys for all this, you know, turning up. Uh, booming. Amazing, amazing. Yeah, let, let's just keep it practical now, you know, share direct tips that can help each other. Just like a CV review, you know, that kind of thing. And you know, oh, this is my CV, it's not your CV. <laughs> and whatsoever that is passed goes to that. A uh, shout out to Agba King. You know, and let me just use the opportunity to say, uh, big well done and kudos to the amazing thing you're doing uh, through Aptland. Uh, of course, in, in case you've not let about um, heard any, anything about Aptland, uh, it's a Udemy for us, made by us and made for us. You know, it, it really solves a lot of problems. Many courses are there on web design. Some are free, you know, some are paid, but you can even use your Naira card to pay. Very detailed courses. Some of my courses are also there too. And when you see Nigeria, they're also creating this platform. That's how Demi also started. That's how Coursera, all of these things started uh, because of his passion and focus on Africa and enabling Africans to grow. I mean, uh, that means a, a lot to me. He's also an alumni, you know, uh, alumnus of of University of Illinois, where I also finished, you know. So it's I'm, I'm so proud that uh, better by far, you know, where we are doing this, uh, yeah. Uh, all for Africa, all for Africa and for Nigeria. So thanks. Thanks, bro. Yeah, I have four people on the call now. Uh, yeah, I think there are five already. Wow. That, that's a good number. So uh, Tina was the first and followed by Richard, Bumi, Bayo, and Franklin. So um, my, by the way, it doesn't have to be questioned. It could be your own contribution, your personal experience in you know, short and brief that could really, you know, help, help people. Okay, Let, let's start with Tina. Okay, good evening, everybody. Uh, good evening, Ola, and thank you so much for putting this together. It's not a topic we get to see on our streets, on these streets every day. So thank you so much for putting this together. Um, actually, um, it's storytelling is something that I've actually experienced a lot or I've even benefited from. The fact that um, um, I try to position myself or try to write about a where I was and where I am now, I've seen how um, transformational that can be. And I would just like to um, buttress on your point of industry um, specific case study. So, um, and I would use um, a project that I worked on a couple of, um, a year ago, and that was focused on um, reality TV shows. And the way I wrote about this pro um, project a company that was actually interested in doing something for reality TV shows saw this and they got interested. It, like it, 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 it kind of sparked their interest and it reached out to me. And today I'm working for that company. So I think when um, writing a story, it's not, and it wasn't just about the um, dashboard in short, it was about what I had written about that project, the thing I could, um, uh, or the processes and everything. I had written about that project. So I think it's one, like knowing how to craft your story or how to tell, um, put, um, write those story very well in a way that catches your audience attention or in a way that makes your work visible in your words is very, very key. I'm just going to end it here. Thank you once again. Wow. 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 Tina, God bless you. This is this real so so that we are not just talking for the chosen. These are real examples. Tina, I have been doing data analysis before you started. Eh? It's not by proud, but they did not reach out to me, did they? Did they come and ask me now to come and do it? Because I did not do industry. What you did, did I do it? No. No, they, they could not see that visibility. That is exactly how it works for you. 
the, uh, so it's not it's not that if you have been doing it for many years, maybe they've now said these are the seniors, so these are people who always go and reach out to know it is who is telling the story, who they can see that is doing that thing related. There was a guy on LinkedIn who posted, who told the story, he did analysis about politics, election, Nigeria election, previous election. Then they put it in a story and a slide. And rather than just showing numbers and say, this is my dashboard, he just put in a story to bring out some major points, highlights, and about two-minute video, less than that, and put it on LinkedIn. When I checked, after he shared the story on Twitter this year, during Nigeria election, that video on LinkedIn only had about 24 reactions. But you know what? The UN engaged him and had him to the part of the team that understood the Nigerian election for you know 2023. That is it, though. This it's just the way it inters as you know, sector specific, you know, seasonal election is one, <laughs> once in every four years, I mean, at least the presidential election in Nigeria. And he just did something about it. But he was, I saw it, oh, this is truly, truly storytelling because he was telling the story. And look at what Stin also said. Many people today is by doing that thing, speaking to an industry, speaking to a major event, speaking and highlighting some event um, that brings out that um, relevance, that say, oh, this is the kind of things we want, not just I'm a data analyst. You know, because organizations alone do not even see, uh, they relate more with what's, is, you know, they, they know. So th thanks for sharing the very relevant, very relevant, really appreciate. Um, I'm passing this over to Rachel. Okay, um, thank you very much. I actually have a question. Um, Please go ahead. First, yeah, but first I'm going to share something. I think that while sharing your learning journey, there's also some things that you also need to do. You cannot be going for, to be a data analyst. And in your timeline, everybody you are following are software engineers. So you have to try and follow people in your field. I think there's a girl I saw on Instagram. She was talking about herself and how she spent a whole year to prepare herself to apply for a job in Microsoft. And I even saw her in the Microsoft view they did this year. She was on stage. You understand? She had to prepare herself. It took her time, but she took a whole year to prepare herself in order to get there. So it's just a step-by-step -step process. And also try and connect with people in your field. And when most times you have interest in joining a particular company, try and follow people in that company, engage in their post. And definitely, they're going to be seeing what you are posting. You might think that, OK, I'm just, these people, they have so many followers. They are not seeing what I'm posting. Um, they are not following me, but I'm following them. So I'm not sure they are seeing what I'm posting but they are seeing you. So just continue. Companies that you are interested in, try to follow them. Try to follow people working for that company. It's going to be like a visibility for you that when you are trying to come into that company, people can stand for you and say that, ah, ah this person, I've seen what this person can do. She's able to, she's, she's capable for this particular role. You understand? People are going to stand for you. Just with what you are posting online, your visibility, your learning journey, sharing your learning journey online. Yeah. Okay, uh, let me go ahead with my question. So the question I have to ask is, um, there's something you said from the beginning of the call. So I want to ask, how do you share your learning efforts in a, when you're already working in a company? How do you position yourself? For good, good, question. good question. So just quickly before I answer that question, I appreciate the submission you made about you know uh following the relevant people in that industry and i want to add something quickly to this which is don't do it once you know when you are storytelling i need to emphasize on this sometimes you posted something five months ago you didn't get enough reaction and that's one thing you always say about me how many times have you seen my post about power bi project to challenge you i repeatedly just find a way to create it and bring it out there I've done it since. How many times have you seen my tweet about um, SQL play, S SQL playlist? How will it come out? Because the fact that you posted it five months ago, you can make a lot of story from that same effort one time and be you know, repeatedly telling it from different angles and sides. You know, it's a long tail thing because you know what it is. You you did it 
five months ago, you can reflect on it after one month. Oh, if I if I knew this before, I would have changed this on my visual. I put the visual there and you just put what you would have changed there. When I started, I wrongly applied this concept in this Power BI. This is the new way to apply it. People want to go and see it. And people, as you are, they are seeing it, they are, you are also telling that story of you now know what you are doing. You now, you've learned something. You know, you are now, you know, a master of this and that. You know, you are still learning. Speaking to your question about gaining visibility, there are, there are ways to do that uh, within an organization. One is ownership. If you can take ownership, you know, recently there's a video of, um, you know, uh, Barack um, Obama, you know, a former president of the U.S., flying all around, that what will he look into someone if he's going to hire someone? And the summary of his message is doers. Doers are people who, you know, are not just talking. Get, taking ownership of any, something and doing it is more than in a meeting, someone that will be mentioning 1,000 ideas, but let's go and do it. You cannot even go ahead and say, I'm championing one. Getting things done doesn't really mean that you are the one go 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 that must do it. At Microsoft, we have a lot of program managers. Ah, that was when I knew that almost to be monitoring people and follow up with people who don't his work. And that's and they you know, they have career. So some of this initiative might be that oh, you take the responsibility to lead it, but you have stakeholders to work with, and you know how to report and communicate this. So, uh, for example, David David Abu is right on this. He's program managing data first. Africa. David will be in my DM. All that. David has called me out on Twitter. I said, go and check, answer your DM on Twitter. You know, you know, you know, you know this are, that, that's one trait. The fact that you could work with stakeholders and get them to deliver and get the things done is a very good way to show that oh, you are good at managing people to get things done. It gives you visibility. Or two, you can get it done because you have the skill and deliver on time. As far as you can do your own part, even when the one that has the program management skill is doing it and gain that visibility, to that person at that layer, they also see that you, you can do your own, you do your own well and you did it on time. No, you are also a doer. Number two, soft, there are soft things like, um, um, communi- uh, like initiatives. When we're in my, my former organization, we do something called knowledge sharing session. As simple as that is, knowledge sharing session. I mean, once in a week, there's a 15-minute session where we present on a topic. And if it doesn't exist, the person that brought that idea is, is good, gain visibility, and that's also an opportunity for everyone to come. It's not necessary to be technical. Just bring a topic, and within 15 minutes, you present actually 10 minutes, the remaining five minutes just to pass me back or tell you guys, or the, uh, the, this is the question for the week or clinical like that. Very interactive and engaging session. That was the same moment to just share how I discovered my passion in community, how I struggle at the early days of starting up in this career, how I do this, how I. So it's, in fact, the emotional part of the story used to touch people. So it doesn't have to be, come and show me how to do this automation or how to do, you know, run, be this website. People know those things. But tell a story from other side that could touch people's emotion. In all honesty, people want to relate with that, you know. Um, so that one, if they don't have one, you could suggest one, you know. And suggest initiatives like that goes a long way, you know, um, um, to address this. That's true. Number three, communication. I mentioned this. If you go for an event or you have, a, you read a book, you know, some people start book club, book reading club. These are outside. Uh, extracurricular things within work that still makes a lot of sense and impact and put visibility. You went for an event, uh, you want to share that, you know, or you want to share your struggle. It could, it could even be balancing how I balance, you know, how I balance work with certification, you know, in case you are writing certification, you know, or, you know, how I said no, how I, you know, say no, as simple as these things are, saying no is not easy. In fact, I'm still learning how to say no today. Because you want to be a doer, you want to catch up with everything, you want to prove to people you can do. And before you know what is there, that passion, eh, hey, Emua, bring it, hey, do this, eh. Hey. Before they mention your name, you are there, yeah, I will do it. No, I don't actually to do Even sometimes eh, I feel embarrassed because when I say to you, I'm like, no, 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 you are not doing this. So I've been taking too much. So now my man is even telling me that I'm not doing this because they don't expect me to say yes to it. And now I'm saying yes. 
you know, it, it could be how I learn to say no or how I'm learning to say something soft, but that let it show that you exist. Sometimes, you know, your team, when it comes to promotion, you are, your manager is not the only person that has to say promoting. That's all. all that you need, all that department must also know that, mm, okay, I know something about this girl. Oh, I've had an encounter with this girl. Another one, anytime you work with people, ask them for feedback. That shows growth mindset. Tell them, oh, you work on this together. Oh, I deliver this work to you. Can, can you just, you know, share with me uh, your feedback about the way I manage the entire engagement that we had? Uh, you know, they could just pass beyond the work you've done. Oh, I thought you did it well. What can you, oh, what can I improve on? That is crazy. I didn't know that, wow, this kind of person, yes, that seems mature. You know, some people does not even bother at all. No, I exist. As far as I can do my thing, I'm alone. No, you need to also do a few of those things. Interacting with them, asking for feedback. Or if you use Microsoft Teams in your organization today, you can give praise. It goes a long way. You know, when you do something with someone, just send the praise to them. You know, thank you for being an inspiring person or being, you know, a cooperative team member. I always love working people who are inspiring, who are doing this, and I love the way we work together on this project. Thank you for always being yourself and supportive. I appreciate you. You send it. You might think, oh, they are not sending it to me. I'm the one sending it. When they go back, the managers will see the praise, you know, category. See, you give a lot of praise to people. That's even the manager. That's, if nobody, if all these people are not giving it to you, they think they are taking praise. You that you are giving, you are also blessed. Blessed is the giver and the receiver. But the giver is even more blessed than the receiver. So, you know, those are little things but goes a long way. It could even be sending a message, a message, a team's chat to your manager. After all, every quarter, just saying, I look back at my performance last quarter and I said, I wouldn't have been able to do this without your help and support. You know, giving me time to make mistakes and learn fast, you know, providing those feedback in case you even have issues with your manager that was not palatable with you, but sending an email and still commending that everything indicates that he or she is interested in your growth. Before you know what is there, you are just the person they would like to work with. No matter how much of issues you guys have. So I'd like to just stop here because there are not uh, that we share, but I hope those points can really help you or are meaningful, yeah. Thanks, um, I'm passing this over. In case anyone has something to add to this, you know, Tina, you know, please you are free to always make a request or just just, just speak. Uh, I think Bumi is the next person, then that will be Bayo, then Frank. Yeah. Okay, okay thank you so much, um, Buki, for this session, something I've actually been looking forward to for like a while now. Um, I probably don't have like <laughs> too much experience to share, but I think I, I actually noted some of the points you mentioned. Um, and for me, I think where, where I'm currently working now, I actually never applied for the job. Wait, wait, wait. I mean, you're a student, you are a student, right? Yes, I am. So, and you said mm -hmm. you are currently working somewhere. So, guys, just before you share this, this generation is blessed. Mm -hmm. Two years after I finished work, I finished school, I, me, I'm still struggling to even say, what will I do? And some people today, they are, they are students, but they are already working. They are gathering their experience. Hey, I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. Okay, uh, continue. Okay. <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, so uh, as I was saying, uh, I, I work with a U.S. company now um, as a machine learning engineer. And before I got the role, actually, um, I was on LinkedIn for Faithful Morning, and somebody reached out to me. Ah, I saw your article on optimizing hyperparameter tuning, and I loved it. And I think you you can actually help us solve one of the problems we face at work and. Okay, I, I didn't expect probably a job. Maybe just you're just going to ask me a question. I'm going to give the answer. So he asked me some questions. I gave my thoughts. And then from there, we had like one hour call. And the next thing I was signing contracts, joining the company. <laughs> so uh, that was how I, like, I got my own current role. I think I, I wrote the article in 20, I think 2021 or 2020. So it's actually been a while that I, I wrote it. So probably that's been like, uh, one of my own good sides of sharing your thoughts and all. So um, for me right now, 
working and studying and all. So I, I, I'm, I'm no longer looking at it as work-life balance. More like I'm looking at it as different um, aspects of my life that should be in synchronization with each other. So that that's what I, I see my life as right now. And it's probably a lot better. And as Ivoke said, learning to say no, right? I, I used to be so choked up with work. But now I think I'm enjoying my peace of mind much more. <laughs> um, so my, my question is, um, so when you begin to work, at least my, my own experience, what I, I, I've been facing, I noticed that my content creation skills have probably sort of declined, um, mostly because um, I was choked up, burned out, like I think for March, March to late May, I was still like trying to recover and all. But um, even even before that, I noticed that I had like little content sharing at all. I I, I really could not um, figure out why. So you, you mentioned something about ownership at work and all. I try, but I'm definitely going to do more about that, like own my stuff at work, um, make people know. Because I have taken like a number of certifications this month, and I think my boss just know one. So I'm going to, yes, I'm definitely going to work on that. Um, sharing and all. So back to my question. So for me, working, right? And then, you know, there are some stuff like company policies, non discussion agreements. How do you sort of manage this with your content creation, whereby you're not violating um, company rules, and at the same time, you're talking about what you've learned? Yeah, so that's my question. Well, this is really interesting. I would like to also take comments, you know, contribution from people, but let me quickly say this. Um, first, you... I see a story from your experience in born down and not being able to do this again. First, you could just say, I gave up. How I gave up, you know, how I give up, it is good. And the message is to say that, yes, you can give up on somebody. That doesn't mean you are no longer coming back to it. At that moment, I gave up because I was almost, you know, uh, and you then tell a story how you got overwhelmed. There was a time last month. I wanted to go on a trip to Ghana for a training. Uh, to, I'm facilitating the training. That training squeezed me, drained my energy, preparing for that training, not even delivering it. It's going to be run for a week. And I have a couple of things that I do. You know, me, I'm always good running multi things together. But that training shocked me so much that, Kai, anytime I just remember I'm traveling next week, all my energy does to zero. Mm -hmm. And the moment the training got moved, I felt like I can do 10 things again, new things. So it could come like that, that you are, you are bound out. Yes, we cannot all master saying no. There's everybody, even the manager, when they say, I'm, I, I'm good at saying no, still has a lot of things that they are saying yes to. Uh, but first, your story at that point of giving up that itself, that bond down, that could just be story. That could just be the story. And people will find it useful. People will find it relevant. Other people will still find it relevant. And it doesn't have to be too long. What happened? I just gave up. You know, when I was so tired, when I was this, I was that, I felt that this, then I have to step back. It's not step back. Or how you refuse to step back and you later broke down. As simple as that is, one. Number two, now that you work in company, you see now that it's not easy to go out and just share. That's why you say, hardly you see me sharing. I, I'm working on a lot of ND. David, I was working a lot of ND. We don't share those things directly out there. But what I lit, what I then later focus on is my story around helping people, spoiling them to do things, you know. But but yours could could be about general things. If you have time to work on personal project, you could share that project. If not, you could go back to all the project you've done. How a student, maybe someone that is, you know, uh, coming to you, uh, did anyone come to you and you have referred them to some of the projects you've done before? How this project help this person master a particular skill? You could share it. As simple as that. You could go back to and tie it together. You could just reflect, what can I bring out here? What topic? What, what is happening to me now, right now? Um, 
Um, you know, it's, just, it's not even about setting New Year resolution. Your work, but not like your work. If you are born out, if you are you're managing, you are going green, you know, you are doing things well, you can still share that without sharing the details of your work. Um, so that that is one that I don't share details of your work. I've seen someone that was actually uh, that lost his, his job because he was right there on LinkedIn sharing exactly the screenshot of the work. It was, I mean, guy, why would you do that? Uh, it's, it's not good, but uh, you could share your experience. How I participated in my first product or you know project that goes live. You know, how was it for you? I felt like I couldn't even do it. And later, what was the thing you did? I did it afraid. It wasn't like I beat up my company and started doing it. I was doing it, I was still afraid. But later, the thing went live. You know, I did my own best. You know, you know, as simple as that is, you share that. When you're also doing your own first mind, you don't think you must have all the confidence when you start. And even till you deliver your part, you might still be afraid, thinking it's not working, thinking you've not done it. Right. But it's still working. People have gone home, gone live with it. Or you learn your lesson. That's the, that's the list. And you move on and you improve on that. So as simple the real thing is the best of the stories are not the most technical thing. They are real life lessons. They are simple things, you know, that could really, uh, you know, spur the next person, one or two people, you know, um, um, uh, you know, to growth. Being reflective can help. Uh, yeah, being reflective. That just if I reflect back now, one year, one month, yesterday, last week, you know, last month, just what happened? What can I just tell about this without? too much of story and tie that to something else in your story tie that to your skill tie that to your you know uh boy, your next role tie that to a soft skill you are trying to build tie that to you know uh how i was improving how i started product 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 management you know or i was interviewing a guy today and i asked him he, for two years was learning front-end development he was doing html although he did not understand he said he kept doing it it was just one day like this, one project he, he engaged with a friend, and that was the tipping point for him. Then he now understood all the concept better, and he started now. Now today is the front end developer is working, you know, in a company. He's still a student, a 300 level student. And has been working for, in fact, he has trained people. The team he joined today that is working, when he got to that team, someone made him that act. Ah, you know that our coach that trained us on this, thing? me, I trained you, me, that I'm sick of me as an intern. Well, yes, in reality, he's trained he's someone that's been working in that role for over a year. You know, the same person that just got there as an intern. Uh, and that same person struggled for two months, uh, two years, trying to learn those concepts. So I said, but nobody is there. You think when you start learning it, you just understand immediately. Come and tell this kind of story so that people know that even you, that you are mastering it now, you struggle two years and there's no fear. There's no crime, no getting it right. But be reflective. How you can you know, uh, sharing with people what they can do to avoid, you know, studying, you know, on that drought, two years, three years, or one year, and not really understanding where they are. Uh, that's the advantage. That's the goal. Help them cut short. That's, you know, um, wilderness experience where nothing seems fruitful, um, but you are just there, you know, laboring. Uh, okay. So I'm not sure how much this address your point, but I will say this. Those burnout experience that you weren't able to go back to, you know, to writing, there's really nothing bad about that. You cannot continue to be writing. No. Uh, you don't write every time. A few moments, you eat those things, you just go ahead and push something. If you go back there, how, uh, I, I stop, why I stop writing, why I stop sharing for the last three months. I could share number one, I resume a new job and it's not easy to work on personal projects. So the people will know that when you get a job, it, it might, you might not have the time. To be working on personal about what you've done in the past can speak for you. And that alone is even a lesson. And you can then tie back. These are projects I've done in the past. And I just I was able to refer people to it. Oh, as many, I just don't want to take too much of time here. Um, I believe, you know, we could get more comment in the, more people commenting or personally speaking to that um, after this. Thank you for me. Bio. I think after yeah. bio Frankly, uh, can you hear me, sir? Yes, loud and clear. Okay. Um, I want to start by saying thank you. You know, there was a day that you sent a DM to me that you would like like a call with me one on one, and then this is exactly what you discussed with me that day about storytelling. 
And then the way you carefully analyze my pin tweet that day, that we could have done this, we could have done the story in another way, we could have done like this. Then I went back to like own workspace, like, oh, this person, what he told me, let me try to like put those things into practice. And then a lot of people here might not be thinking that the thing is actually real. Then I went back to my LinkedIn. Then I make a post about that same um, project, just that I refund it a little bit. And then I got 238 likes for the post. Then what happened next is that a student of MSc in the UK texted me that I can see that you are into data analytics. Can you explain what you are doing? Like what you are doing for me? Then I explained everything. I said, okay. I can pay monthly. How much will you collect to be training me? That's how I got like the first question. And she's in pounds already. Like that is where I'm seeing money to enroll for more courses, get anything that I want, everything. Just what? wait, Bio. I'm I'm just getting in fact. This was barely three weeks ago, right? Yes, yes, when we had the call. Just like <laughs> <laughs> even yeah. myself, my dad, I did not even know. You see, guys, you see this? Oh, interesting. Yeah. So, wow. thing, um, I'm not. I, I didn't actually like. I mean, I'm not in a job now. Just that, uh, just making the story to like uh, change the little bit. The way I think was changed after the call. Then I already got one person that is paying for myself and all those things. And I even got a from. Somebody from GB Foods, all those people that make genos and all those kind of thing that just tell me more about your analysis. I don't like calling analysis name before until you tell me, like you can actually call it name, customer behavior analysis, all those kind of thing. I just want to do data analysis, um, do dashboard and drop it. I don't like talking about it. Until we like you explain all those things, then I started calling it name, customer behavior analysis, ETL. I call the name that they are supposed to call. Like the person just be like, "Oh, this is a complicated analysis." Whereas it was the same thing I shared. With you. <laughs> Interesting. So I just want to say thank you very much. Yes, and then those things that you um, actually like suggested, they are actually working. So thank you very much. Wow, thank you, thank you, Bio, for sharing this. In all honesty, I do this randomly. You know, I don't have much of time, so I don't guarantee that. I mean, at least once in a week or once in two weeks, I will go on Twitter. Those people that have been doing things, I will DM them. I'm sorry for saying this in live here. I DM them and ask them, do you, would you like to have a 30 minute with me this week? You know, and I'll find that time. I will listen to them on that call. I will make some recommendation. You know, I, 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 do, I do that. And then, you know, I, by your... That very, I see him repeatedly liking, commenting on my tweet. This and this, okay, this guy, let me see how I can also help him. You know, uh, what can I, you know, how can I help him? And, you know, I'm surprised. Uh, well, I shouldn't be surprised because in reality, uh, I see that this guy is good. You've done good work. This is, he told me this is the second. If you go to, to his profile, pin profile, you see pin tweet. That thing he had there was a second, was a second dashboard. <laughs> This was your second project, and you did it like even with Excel. But uh, we, if, how many tweets? Uh, how do I put it now? How many like does that project has? You know that that should be not so much. But yet this guy knows his craft. At least what he has done, he knows it. So I just have to analyze that and go into detail within that you know time frame, and I give that. I'm really happy, you know, and I just want to say thank you to every leader, everyone, you know, on this call, who is doing similar thing in their field, in web development, you know, you know, uh, in developer tools, data, you know, out of data, you know, in all those space. But so that's how people truly, uh, I see the hand is a bio. Yes, yeah, so uh, the thing that I forgot to add is that, uh, you see, that particular one that you said, um, I keep engaging your tweet and all those things. I don't know, like, if you uh, remember at Global Power Platform in Lagos, that you were saying that there's a professor that you built a course for that actually contacted you. So, mm. like, that person that you were saying that, you said you make yourself available for the person, you keep engaging, engaging until you were noticed. That was actually the same thing that I was practicing, that, oh, when I see your tweets, I'll be the first to engage. That's the only way I could get your attention. You are a very busy person. That thing that you shared yeah. that day, I was just applying it like until I saw your DM, like, oh, this is the person. Mm. Mm. 
Thank, thank. Now, let me now share myself. Just the way uh, I watched the shot about um, uh, what do you call him now? Uh, Don Jassy last was it this week? And the mention say same way we are in my DM. I'm also in Rihanna's DM. You know, we are always in someone's DM. You know, uh, it, it's like what you just done now. Even myself, I'm still doing it today, not just once. For people that want to gain the attention, for people that want them to, I pay a lot of attention. I make that intentional effort. I don't say do this so that you can now do come back to me. No, I just keep doing that because one day it will pay. Even at work, it does that. I set up one on one chat with a lot of people just to you know get to know about them when we're on a call, on Teams call, and we're in the same organization. And I see you made the talk. And this is the first time, you know, me, I'm seeing you. Or second time, or at least you did a presentation. I will send a comment and say, well done, good job. I love, the, you know, what you presented this and this. Good comment. If I have any feedback, I will pass it. Because before you know what it is, one day, there will be a project or a request that I need from that person. That will not be the first time I'm initiating a call with that person or a chat because I need them or her. I have, I have built up that trail. So it's easier. That person is welcoming to me. That I, uh, this is not an empty blank chat. Now I know this guy. Oh, this guy did this. Oh, he has done it. Yes. And the person you talked about here is for me that I told you about is Professor Ndubuse Kekwe. You know, the majority of you know Ndubuse Kekwe is my distance mentor. To have that kind of person as dinner is not, is not easy. Uh, it took me about two and a half years to consistently follow him, bought his book, no, go on Tekidia. He opened a Facebook uh, of for entrepreneur called Tekidia. Ah, forgotten this. I was the first non-team, non-team member that registered on that plan. I was the first person. I mean, after the developer and prof, and maybe another one that was testing it, I was the first. The, the uh, three minute prof made that post like this on in the middle of the night. I click on the link. I registered there. I created my profile. I did everything. I was posting. I was sharing. Ah, I sent a feedback testing the platform. I sent it to provide DM in, in a PDF document. These are the features, glitches. I observed this and this, this and this. <laughs> the man was surprised. So fast, this and this. I went on, I created the course. I did not talk to him that uh, I can do this, I can do that. I told him, sir, I'm creating a course like this. I don't know if you like us to, you want to put it in your program. It's free. Can you come? He said, yes. Three weeks, I delivered the entire curriculum. Workplace product, uh, automation, collaboration, and productivity. When I delivered the folder, he called me straight from US. He said, even the people in Spain that work with him, three months, they will not deliver on those content, and they will still call that their system crashed on somewhere. You know, I wish you know that is a lie. Which system is crashing that you say is a lie? But three weeks, I delivered this. He called me said, this is my number. What do you need? I said, no, I don't need it. Oh, God, I don't need my no, Don't pay me money. I don't do anything. Prof, we have a private engagement. Some company will message me. Ola, are you able to jump on the call with me? Let's present this together. Yes. Prof met me. He came to me. This, he talked to me this and said, anytime you have the speaking again, he said, talk to me that he is available for me. So said, why is Prof come here? I'm, I'm telling me. He said, the courses that I created, two students have used those courses to gain job, specifically those jobs, one in Facebook, Meta, the other in Satanda. You know, which is a very big bank. And he, you, I did pay that. That's, that's the way I got. I did it by service. Me, I was, and I was not doing it to say, Prof, come and give me this. So it's also, I'm happy that, you know, you just brought that up because I noticed you, no, and that's the way I watch out. I watch out for people and I reach out to them. I have some people that are engaged now, working today, because those guys were constantly, you know, writing, tweeting. After Global Platform Bootcamp, just so that I move to the next person, um, there was a lady, I'm not sure if she's on this call, Blickies by name. She learned about Power Platform. She has finished service. She came to Power Platform Bootcamp and learned about Power Platform. And all of a sudden, uh, that very week after that program, she started following the content that people talked about and recommended. When she took take them, she will build the solution, share it on Twitter, tag some of us that she met at that bootcamp, Every day she did it for five days. That was the same period. One organization engagement asked me that oh, they need some beginners, you know, in Power Platform, just people that he knows or have interest in it. I did not know that this girl just started learning. 
But because the way she was sharing every day, the solution she beat, you even share a five second video about the thing, even look some sometimes. Ah, that was I reached out to Are you interested in this guy? She said, Yes, when you come, she came on board. Now she's working. She's working now. And when I later when I was training them and you know, training, because I also trained them, you know, and she told me that, that it just she just had one week experience. So. And now she's 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 very good at it now in just a month and a few weeks space now. It's very good. So doing that kind of thing, it it just goes a long way. And that I should speak to storytelling as well, because she was maybe the timing worked well because I've just learned there to see her content. I would like her and it to her almost oh, this guy is doing well. And that day I'll see that things like that. So thank you. Uh, for bringing this up, just to share. This might not even uh, be about storytelling, but it's how you gain confidence and then um, investment from, from people that are more above you. Today, I still do the same thing, you know, that you are doing. You already did. I'm still doing it for other people too. We are all in someone's DM. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, Franklin. Uh, why am I calling Franklin? Franklin. Good evening, everybody. Can you hear me? Yeah, okay. first of all, I want to say thank you for organizing this. Like Tina said, this is not one of the things that we see regularly on Twitter. Um, so it's amazing, and all of the speakers have said incredible things. They have most of what I wanted to say, they have, they have done justice to it. So I wanted to shine light to two, two things that um, probably we have not talked about here. And um, those things is uh, building in public or storytelling your learning effort or your career effort goes beyond coming to Twitter and LinkedIn. So I'm a data science and machine learning engineer, and one of the things that shows that you actually know how to do data science is your is how much you have participated in things like hackathons and, and these challenges. And recruiters usually go to places like Kagu and Zindi and say, okay, this person has participated in 50 hackathons and see what he was able to do. So if he's able to engineer these solutions in this hackathon, he is probably most likely going to be very, very have what working with us. So it goes beyond actively coming out here to say, yes, um, I, I did this today and doing this. I, I did this the other day and posting here. Building in public also shows that you have a track record. So in places like Zindi and Cargo, you can come up just passively. You're already building in public, and you don't have to just come out and say it. And again, it goes also goes beyond technical skills. Like building hackathons and machine learning is all is all technical, but there's other aspect of growing in your career that is soft. That's for soft skills. And one of the ways you can build that is actually working with communities. I actually love communities a lot. I love working with communities. When people say that you can work with communities and lead communities, they know that you have some skills that are not just technical. You can be able to handle pressure. You can be able to communicate better. Those traits are built when you, you work with communities. So that's one aspect of building, um, building in public that I want people to look into. When you see a community, always indicate it. In, indicate interest. I want to do this. Um, I can do this. Let me try. Like when um, Mr. Ola was talking, he said, whenever he sees an opportunity, he wants to jump on it. Jumping on those opportunities, working with communities, it shows that when, it's act when the time for pressure actually comes, you actually deliver. And I want to just testify, like um, when Bayo was speaking, he talked about um, actively trying to get people to notice you. When I started out data science, um, then I opened a new Twitter account. I came to Twitter and I, I was like, okay, wow, there's actually a community of data scientists and data analysts. First, I didn't even know when we say data science and data analysts and what machine learning was. I was just learning data science. And I began, I began to follow different people. And after a month, or a, it, a month, I think I opened my account in June. In July, um, something started with Mr. Ola started doing um, this 30 days of learning. I've forgotten what he called it, but it was every night by 12. It was a stand-up meetup. And constantly, even if I was I was going to sleep, I'll say no. I will be I was always one of the first to join the back call. Every single call I made a contribution. So that way it kept me going. And when it goes to the point of when um, I was almost giving up with data science. I just opened my Twitter one day and I just saw the only book he followed me. Wow. I was I just got energy from somewhere. 
I just know, okay, if this man that I'm looking up to so much can follow me, which means I'm doing something right. So that gives me another energy. So it goes beyond your technical abilities. It goes beyond you being able to do all of those wonderful things. Engage with communities. Try as much as possible to um, push yourself actively and also passively. Thank you very much. Wow. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so, so much, Franklin. Sorry. Frank, please. Hey, somebody... Yeah, Tina, please, I want you to speak to this. Okay. Um, basically, no words as what Frank um, said, I totally agree. And I can remember, I remember that stand up, and Frank was always the first. Really. But I wanted to add something. To... If, um, it's not just about storytelling, your learning efforts, it's also about being consistent with storytelling your efforts that's something because i think some persons might feel like might want to attribute like there's this old grace factor that will be like oh it's working for this person me to have been telling stories why am i not seeing the results it might be that like how you said timing is key when are you when are you putting out those um things or when i so i think consistency is also another big factor when it comes to um, storytelling, um, your learning efforts, or storytelling, um, uh, making yourself visible. I think that is another thing. I just wanted to mention that. Perfecto. I agree with that. Uh, nothing, I fear few people in this world, you know, outside God. Uh, you know, there's this common saying that outside the uh, clinical fear woman, yeah, they say use the use ninety percent to fear woman. Use the many times to fear the person that did not fear woman. <laughs> Me, my own is not about fear woman. I feel like people that are consistent, come on, they can do. If you know, the, let's look at the story. You know, um, you know the Blika, uh, this perspective. You now, when these guys were building the Tower of Babel, beyond being coherent, there was this level of consistency that they were showing up every day. For that purpose, show up for yourself every day. So tell that God, these people they will be, they will reach everyone if we leave them this way. We have to go and do something. So literally, it's proof to us that if you can be consistent and show up, your own time will come. And that's you know just the summary of what Tina is trying to hey, guy. That consistency is good. Go on my story on LinkedIn. When I started my career, yeah, I did, I was consistent. Me itself, I know. I just know that this is, I was sharing. Twitter, I wasn't that much on Twitter until December 2021. Say, okay, oh, let me come back to this Twitter. November, December, thereabout. But LinkedIn, I was sharing, so and I was consistent. Far back then, we used to have physical meetups. I would leave work. On Friday, especially on Friday, I just bad that that time. You know, a lot of yeah, Saturday, different uh, ODSC events. You know, on Fridays, on different things like that. I will leave Yaba. Hmm? I will leave my office on Friday, close early, take permission from my manager, do all those things, so that I can close early and attend that five p.m. meetup. Inside traffic, yeah, but there was a day I go to Maran twelve just because I want to. I went to attend the meetup. You know, show up in physical event, show up with your story showing up. This is who this person is. I everybody will attest to you that Frank Frank always show up and was consistent. During Data Fest 2022, the way this guy carried Data Fest on his head, Abba, you will think he's the one that carried the vision, you know, received the vision and say he's running with it. You know, I mean others that do similar thing. So showing up and being there, being consistent, this is you. People just want to. Most they know that in this place today, people that are data science, we can mention them. But that is not that does not mean that there are only people in data science, right? No. We have a lot. But the post ones, only few people that knows them, except we start saying that okay, you say you, you are into this, okay, and we can see you that you are into it. Yeah. That being consistent goes a long way to reaffirm. It's like a storytelling, it's like a conversion and sales process. That is why marketing people goes a long way. When I'm scrolling on my TikTok, I used to see a lot of artists. I don't know how I pick so much inspiration from them. Rema, 
Miyokun, all those people. And short, short clips about maybe they are, you know, behind the scenes. There was one behind the scene uh, that Miyokun did. Uh, uh, if nobody say, if nobody say, you know, you know, like that. So, you know, me too, I'm an upcoming artist. Yeah? Maybe that's why that girl is speaking. It. But this guy was repeating that thing, you know, several times different versions till he got it. Abba. You know, these people that we are, you know, and before you see what is there, few, they've gone to Apple Top 10. They've gone, they, those guys are working at. Tayo, I know, followed up 40 minutes, I'll be for two days or 24 hours with David Do. And they do say, Tayo, Tayo, I work hard. 2 a.m. like this, I'm still checking, editing, passing, I do all this and this. So they will be like, oh, 30 billion. Can they Those guys showed up. They are showing up. They are doing that. It's not all these people around us that we think they are giving us the lifestyle that we are relaxing. Hard work, pay. You must work hard. Yeah, we say work smart. You will, nobody rise there by just working smart. You must do that hard work first. Even when you are thinking you are working smart, you are still hard working some out there. So, you know, everything tied back to being consistent. I just want to mention that anytime I see Raymond, that's the good, you know, like that, all these dance steps that he's using to carry all those uh, Indian ladies, all of them are falling and fainting. Guy, it's not just magic that that thing happened. No. This guy also practiced and did all of them. So, that moment of practicing and perfecting him, just similar to your own, of, you know, your own moment of coming out there and show that thing too. Show that thing too, because yeah, you are a star and you are shining, and you have to show there too. So yeah, consistency is is you know that's just it. Uh, does not mean if you are tired and write it out. On so so so, I am tired and I'm not going to post. Autant, if it is one month again, you come you come back. But you know, don't, so it's not like uh, you just burn out yourself. No, but anytime you are there, let people know. Some people will leave Twitter today. We will know when they are back. Say welcome back, sir. Welcome back, man. Oh, it doesn't mean because you have a lot of followers. It's because while you were there, these are the things you are doing you might, for yourself. Okay. Uh, Nina, I think that's one person that we've not... Um... Um, good evening, everyone. Um, thank you so much for organizing this space. So I've learned a lot from beginning of um, the space to this point. So in terms of um, sharing your learning efforts, I just wanted to add a bit of my own experience. So working on projects has helped me in the sense that when you get to interviews, you're able to speak more confidently because you have gained a skill and an experience in probably that field or industry you're being interviewed for. Like... My first job was based off of a project I had done. And when I began speaking, they were asking, ah, it's like you have experience, you've done this, you've done that. I had none. And it was just from a project I had done. Um, through the project, I did a lot of research, tried to work around it. And through that, I was able to understand what the KPI is or, yeah, the KPI is um, I wanted to extract. I was able to speak. To the interviewer in this in that aspect of relating um, my project to what they were looking for in the role. So if you're sharing your learning journey, it's, it's it may not mean that um, and um, a recruiter will come into your DM. It can help you in the sense that it can build your confidence so that when you get an interview stage, you're able to speak confidently. You're able to relay your experience to that role that you're being interviewed for there are so many advantages of working on projects and um, mr ola has always been an advocate for working on projects so it's going to develop you even more more than you can even imagine the way you're going to speak about the topic the way you're able to relay your experience to the industry so that's just what i wanted to add wow Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for sharing that. And that even prompts me to um, add something, which is when you start writing or telling a story about your project, it indeed, in all honesty, prepares you for interview. 
in this, we we've not so much talk about interview. I, I used to hold interview preparatory session with some people. You know, when they reach out to me, you know, I have an interview next three days or next two weeks, and if I have availability, I will schedule a mock interview with them. And I realized many people do not know how to tell the story through those. But if you have written two, three, four, five stories about the same project from different angles, first you share a story about you know what you went through, what Shege did you say? Uh, you know, how did you lose control? Or, you know, when you pick up this project, how I lost uh, or, or how I wasted two days working on this project because I don't know where to start my experience. That alone. It, yes, share your own experience. You know how I applied this concept on this project, how I did this in, in manufacturing industry. If you have written this all those stories about that same project, when you get to interview, you because you created those stories, you have things to mention top of mind. When they ask a question, you top of mind, you're already there, you know, much more willing to to speak to them. You know, to say, oh, uh, industry, because you know those spheres, you know, that you've talked, you can spread and express yourself. Uh, because otherwise, what you've done, you did it, you know it, but the way they question it sometimes becomes difficult. It becomes difficult because uh, you don't even know, uh, I, but I did it. Now, how do you show that? I went for one interview recently. Yes, yes, me. And after I was done with that interview, they said, they are not sure, they are not convinced that I know what I just claimed that I've done. It looks like I, I, I'm not good, that uh, I only program manage people. Eh? I said, me. Is it me? You are, is it someone else or me? That is me. Ah! That was when I knew that, hey, eh, I have to go back. I said, just give me one more chance. In all honesty, recently, <laughs> for one particular engagement, I said, give me one more chance, okay? Uh, because, you know, we've, we have this feeling that you are actually, you know, good, but we are not convinced. So we're going to give you a second chance next week or more. I went back home and that was when I, need, I needed to, now, how can I tell this story? Then I came out. You know, I did something that to showcase that he is maybe you are not convinced technically now. See, and in all honesty, it went so well that after I was done, they did not say anything. They said, This is perfect. You know, we don't we don't let us waste time. We are already convinced. That was the way that was what they said. Don't let us waste time. There is really nothing to ask here. You've done so well. We are convinced now. So uh, that was because myself, what I was presenting today, I have never taken my time to think story wise around it. You know, and that is how well, you know, writing story about a particular project, in case you are even being asked about it, about the impact, about the technical things you did there, about your experience when you're working on it, the issue you face, and how you resolved it, how you apply a particular concept on it. Those things can be a topic you will share. And the moment you share that, you have reflected. And you have, your mind has captured that bird. So when you are asking, you are being query or questioned around that project, you can speak vertically, you know, across all those breads and not just one line, just horizontal because it just, uh, I beat it, I used this, I used this data set, I did this, that was the only thing you could tell about that story. But because you have, you know, explored vertical dimensions of that project, you thought about, you know, the skill, technical skills you're able to demonstrate while working on that project. You talked about the challenges you face while working on the project. You talked about, you know, how that project is applicable to a particular industry and solving something there. You talked about um, overall, you know, the concept you maybe you learned or what you learned on that project. You know, you have a lot of things to share. And that shows that guy, this guy knows beyond the fact that he knows it, uh, it also proves to them. Uh, your level of um, your expertise. I have my guy here, you know, David Abu. Um, I want to share one or two things. Uh, I don't plan to take this really far. It's already one hour, almost 30 minutes. Yeah. David. Okay. Right. Apologies that I'm calling, I'm calling you out, uh, Thank you. <laughs> now, you be our idol now. So, um, so one thing that I... I just wanted to add is that um, writing is also different from talking, and so that those things have affected us. You know, sometimes when we're writing, we are talking, as in we are detecting it with our mouth and writing it the way. And I've learned in the last two years that the way you write is different from the way you talk. And one thing also about storytelling is that the way we write it is different from the way we say it and the way we can actually let the other person understand what we are saying. 
and it also ties back to our interview. Now, one act that I used for my interview is always storytelling. I didn't know how to before, so I'm going to give you one. While I was at Deep Brown, there was a time I did interview. Um, you know, now when you're working, you always do interview outside your job. So I did an interview, and they started asking me data-related questions. And I was using technical terminologies to, to answer them. But that was not what they were looking for. And one of the biggest mistakes also was that I was saying Power Query, Power BI. They were asking me data questions. I'm talking product answers. And that is something I always try to make sure you guys don't fall. When I'm talking to people on Twitter, don't fall in. Me, I talk about Power BI because that is where I work. That is where I do my stuff. That is what pays my bills. But from a community perspective, I don't talk about Power BI. I talk about data conversations. So you need to know how to separate those two conversations. Is this a product question or is this a data question? Those two things are the helps you tell a good story. Oh, am I talking about a an umbrella type of question, data conversation? Or am I talking about a product question? Because sometimes you're talking about data cleaning. It might be different from somebody who is who you're talking about data cleaning in a product. It might be different from somebody in another product. Or a data transformation in a product it might be different from another person. So you need to understand perspective, context, and those things ties back into the way you tell your story. Now, when that interview happened, that interview was 350K, and that was 2019. I failed it woefully. And, and that's a big upgrade on your salary by then. That time, oh, Baba. no. It was a very big job. Very big job, but I failed it. But I learned how to tell a good story. But one thing also that now helped me while applying at Microsoft, um, Tammy is also here. I know that he will have an idea. Even Ola is here. One question, some of the questions that was asked, I answered them in a storytelling format. Now, I always, I know, I remember this question very, very well. The question was, explain. If you know Will Thompson, Will Thompson is one of the top, the principal officer for um, Power BI, as at that time. Now, he asked me a simple question. Explain, calculate. And I used a story to explain the calculate function of, um, of Power BI. And when I was done, he said, and I quote, he said, from now on, I will continue to explain calculate function the way you explained it. That was the feedback I got. And I knew that, you know, when you do interviews, if you do behavioral, there's no problem. If you do with HR, there's no problem. You know that technical. If you don't pass technical, you're not going yes, anywhere. Papa. Yes, you're, not going, <laughs> you're not going anywhere. And that was when I knew that, okay, I have hit something. So sometimes we need to understand that storytelling is, is not as simple as people say, but it's just about you trying to be truthful. Don't, don't say it like, oh, I want to really tell a story. No, say it the way it is. And that way, a whole lot of people will be able to relate with it. And same way for our um, comedians. You know, there are some type of comedians that when you watch some of their skits, they are just relatable. You can understand when they are saying it. There was one bo boy like that, that I think he's in Unilag. He does this comedy stuff. He's a short guy. He, he is, it, just, is it Gimo? Is it Gimo? I don't know if his name is Gimo. He's one short guy. I think whenever he does something, we just say, eh, when mean? he's... There are some videos he does, like, do you know that he's just relatable? Like, the one I watched today was the one that when he gets home, um, the, they are, everybody's grown up at home. So he's, he, so when he gets home, there's no food in the house. And he's just angry that they've not cooked. But before, they, everybody, when we were growing up, there was always food in the house. Now everybody has grown up. Nobody's cooking. So, and he told the mother. The mother says that, so do you expect me to cook for you? And it's something that's relatable. Building stories that are relatable is something. I was speaking to my mentees today. 
um, and they were like, oh, David, I wanted to talk about this on Twitter. I was thinking everybody will know it. I said, mm -mm -mm. everybody does not know everything. Some of us learn too on Twitter. Don't think we don't learn. Say it the way you learnt it. Because some people might have been explaining, or might have been explaining something to me, and I wouldn't understand it. But maybe a beginner will understand it in one way that might click for me. We need to understand that everybody learns different ways. So saying your story differently is good. Data First Africa was a story. That was why we had so many big sources about it last year. Because it was just a story. Like, somebody just tweeted it about it and it was just a story and everybody could relate. So it was so easy when everybody came together and said, wow, that story that started from a tweet became a reality. Now, everybody is looking out for DataFest 2.0 because it's just a story. So storytelling is a huge thing for us. And again, it goes also to the way we do presentation. Public speaking presentation, it goes to that place. Storytelling is the way we tell stories. And that was why I used to tell people, no matter how technical something is, we need to find a way to tell the story. Let's always leave the, the, the big words behind. But let's say the surface level where people can relate to it, people should be able to come in terms with it. And that way, it helps us build stuff. Now, Ola Iruadu made, made a point about helping helping people, community, Frank. And I wanted to tell that story about how Hola helped me to, um, after I got my job at Microsoft. When I got my job at Microsoft, one of the things many people reached out for were, oh, how do I get an, my own job at Microsoft? How did you make it? I want to make it as you make it. It's, a, it's not a bad thing. But I was under a lot of pressure because it was a role that I'd never been before. I was the first cloud advocate globally for Power BI. Like, there was nobody before me. So there was nothing I could model after. So when everybody was reaching out, putting pressure on me, there was nobody that was, that was helping me, apart from maybe resources online. But Olai just sent me a message and said, hey, David, how can I help you succeed in your role? It was the first person that sent me that message that I knew that this person was not looking for to put pressure on me, but to save me because it was too much pressure. I never knew what I was doing. A whole lot of people thought, oh, you are Microsoft, you are fine. No, I was not. So helping people was so important to me. Olai Obadu said, how can I help you? And I said, see what I'm planning to do, but I don't know how to go about it. And allowed you to help me. I said, hey, I can help you go to Kogi State. So people might remember when Hai and Ola Iwaju, we like we flew to Abuja, we got a bus and going to Kogi because there was no direct flight. And no, and he paid his flight by himself. I paid my flight by myself. So he helped me. And I have another person called Jafflet who did the same thing. Now, one thing was that one of the first sources I made was those projects that I did that Ola helped me to do. Now, this is also to say to everybody, like, no matter how successful somebody is, they always need a support system. Most of the time, and that is a beautiful way to tell a story. Bio made mention of that. Tina made mention of that. Um, Bumi made mention of that. It is one of the best ways to win when everybody was not, is not looking at that place. The best way to win is by helping somebody else. Most of the time, that is the best way to tell a story because some people will see you at their lowest point. And you think that getting a job in a very good place is the highest. For, for some people, it's their lowest. That job is just a status. For some people, it's their lowest. So there are different perspectives to storytelling, to building in public, that we might not be able to see but the whole point of it is that helping somebody else is the backbone of how you tell a good story. If you are not helping somebody else, you are really not telling a story. You are just trying to make people know that you are there. That is not storytelling for helping people. And I hope I've been able to say something. 
Wow, wow. This is a bit, this is a bit emotional for me. You know, um, beside the uh, experience that we shared, you know, reminiscing on the time we, we you know, went on those tours together. I, I was just there. David got into my trauma, and that's a good story. It shows the possibility that you can be in Nigeria and still get to that, you know, that dream big company. And that was almost the time I did an interview for LinkedIn, and then um, they almost scattered my head uh, with um, technical questions, everything. I did not move forward. I just knew that something has happened. No, but I, when I now see a brother, I mean, that went almost, oh, yeah, congratulations. What can I do? We should be after each other's success. And, and to be honest, the same thing is what a lot of us are doing by staying on this same you know, space. You know, coming here to support each other. Let's be there. Let's help each other. When you see us together this way, it shows that, you know, we are together. We are one. We are family. We are everything. And... That's the best way to show progress. We'll continue to make progress to grow together. So, so thank you. You could write your story. Being part of that success, there's really nothing bad. Mm? There is nothing bad not being the first man at the front. In my experiences, I love supporting initiative. I love supporting initiative. I've only, I only rise by being a team member before being a team lead. But when I'm support, I'm part of the team. I will give all my best. Ah, ah. So tell that when it's time to say, oh, yeah, it's your turn, people will just gladly put me there. And I prefer to be supporting you and put on my best because leadership is not easy. So, but you, of course, if you can be a good supporter, you will always be a good leader. Because you know how to put your best into things that you do. Now, as a leader, you also know how to, you know, people you're already modeling, you are leaving what you want people to do. Or oh, as I said, Tina, your hand is up. Uh, please, uh, please just speak. Thank you, Ola. Thank you, David, so much for sharing your experience. Um, I just want to add to um, everything that, because something some persons might be worried about is that, because we've been talking, the way we've been saying storytelling, people would also think to the direction of writing, that they don't know how to put their thoughts into writing. So I just want to share like a little bit of tip. Prior to doing data analytics, I wasn't a writer. I don't know how to write. But presently, I have a couple of articles that I've written. So what I do basically is I... Um, initially when I was writing about maybe um, courses I've taken, what I'll do is I'm trying to, I'll be, I'll imagine that I'm explaining or sometimes I would be talking to my sister that this is what I've learned from this course. I learned this and this and this and I'm right, I'm putting that, I'm just typing that in my notes. So I'm trying to explain a problem. Oh, today uh, I was, I, I was feeling very bad that I could not uh, finish building this dashboard and it has um, slowed my process down. As I'm telling uh, I'm writing it down. That was uh, that was how I was able to build my confidence in writing, and most uh, uh, and that that was how I was able to even put um, together all of all those articles. I just imagine me saying that thing, like I'm telling that story to the audience, and I'm writing that. So if you have somebody that you are experiencing that kind of this um, this, and that might be an angle that will help you. Another thing that helped me was I looked for somebody that was actually a very very good writer. Some um, people that actually looked at their style of writing was um, Wofai, Jessica, and Rachel. I just love the way they were putting out or writing, telling their stories online. And that was a format that I just applied to my own story. And it was actually very, very easy for me. So I think this, this might help somebody out there. Thank you. Amazing. It will help a lot of people. Uh, because it, it, the next question could be, how can I get started? Now, you just share something very important. Uh, you will not be good at it if you are not starting somewhere. Anything I do today that I'm good at, see, I finished with the first class in the university, not because I'm that sharp, sharp guy. When we are being taught in class, me, that you see, it might take me two, three weeks to understand what someone has fully grasped just in one sitting in a class. I will go over it again and again and again. So we used to know it and master it. Yes, I know my own. It takes me time. So I will give the time. So if you, uh, some people, because the kind of school I went to, eh? Julie Simini Mulo, Jackie Lee Simi, you know, let the house rest. You know, uh, so we are not, uh, 
you people that you know you 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 do a lot you know your not sure in primary schools you know preschools all this kind of thing my experience was quite different from that mm? but uh, uh that like a popular motivational speaker we say say uh, uh don't let your background put your back on the ground i mean i um, i feel like aspire to my goal right now but but i what that means is me i know that i need to put effort into this so i can grab and be at pace and everything i do that seems to be worth it i'm not yet there i always and if you know when i've been trying to create content video content i started far back 2013 10 years i can share a video that i posted on my youtube i didn't even know everything worked everything was just my voice but I knew that it doesn't work then. I went back. You know, and maybe two years after that time, I tried again being, you know. So I, all these things I do today, that which, of course, you can see the quality. Me, I'm not using iPhone. You can see the quality of the content. But it's just showing up there. I'm doing it. The day I will find myself in that studio, you people like my background. Abby. The background is not uh, in my house. It's not. It's just there to stay and encourage my video content creation. The day you will see me in that studio with HD, 4K camera, everything, you also see that, yes, but that day I will not be blabbing because I have practiced, I've mastered while still working with what I have. You know, same way as you are writing these things, as you, are, you know, you, if you, the day you will have access to that big platform, if you have not been practicing, do not just jump. That spirit will not jump on you because you now have all the things you need to do a great content. A great content is not by equipment, it's not by the kind of device, it's not by the job role you will take up. It starts now, it's from the mind. Because that thing flows from your mind. And if you don't exercise that mind by, you know, for example, just the way you are saying it, Rachel, we put online. And I just like that kind of story telling. Today, I could not do anything. Or today, there was no light in the door. I went to charge my generator in my neighbor's place. And it's 40%. So with this 40%, I just read per article documentation and I build the flow. I'm going back to bed. When I say I'm just so happy, ah, oh, this is interesting, you know, because, you know, She's not hiding anything. This is what I did today, guys. All the day, there was no light to start my PC. In fact, my battery is two percent low. She put it. Uh, you, in reality, you don't need to put all the English out there. That English will get polished as you continue to master and fine tune, you know, and improve on that thing. In meeting monster, yeah, like I said, the school I went to uh, is Jackie Lacey me. So forget those. Uh, ah, what? I think I've improved. I'm speaking some. You, you know, you know kind of you know english but we get there so, so guys yeah so thank you tina for sharing those things you know look at those patterns look at those template you know share yours too uh yeah so so thanks some are very very humor, humorous so if you are humorous you can still use that humor in your content creation it's still part of it as well you know could get people to engage um i'm trying to or i've even accepted um request that i received from me i think it's network miriam see me see me see me just just come and finish us i know but uh um, hopefully they get to join us because yes i think i have miriam now hello miriam ah see me is here too interesting Good to have you on the call. So, uh, yeah, I, I yield the mic to you now. Oh, <laughs> please. <laughs> no, no. Um, I wanted to say hi <laughs> to everyone. I realized this year um, I haven't contributed at all to the community. Um, and also because I remember this conversation was a bit like a back and forth on the timeline. Um, and I think you've done justice to everything you said. I've learned a lot as well. I took notes as usual. Um, and I wanted to thank everyone on the space that continues to share and grow our community. Um, and so I wanted to do also some housekeeping from my end. I think that um, I was once a beginner, um, maybe five years ago, but I was once a beginner. And when I join, um, when I go to like events and stuff and someone comes around and they say so many things, I'm like, okay, today, tomorrow, I'm going to like uh, start documenting, but I never know where to start. I never know how to put these things into my reality. Um, so I wanted to share some things with people today on this space, what it looks like to get started with telling your story, um, what it looks like to get started with building your confidence to talk about what you do. 
um, and what it looks like to take yourself out of the beginner mindset into the, I wouldn't say we're all beginners. I mean, at every point in time we're learning, but how to almost quantify your progress and then build from that. So I'll start with what it looks like to tell stories. Um, the reality is we all, we're all different. And what makes us different sometimes is the thing that also makes us stand out. Um, when I started my career and up till today, I wouldn't say that I create content like Tina or Olari Waju. Um, but one thing always stood out for me when I started my career, I journaled a lot. Um, and journaling in this case is not the usual who I ate today or something, but journaling is taking very detailed notes about the process that led to my learning, right? So if I take some time to learn something or I build something, I always had, even if it was just a Word document of a day-to-day -day tracker, I mean, it's better now. If you look, if you use tools like Notion.io, um, it's way more promising because you can create a board and then track the activities that you do on a daily basis and put notes there. Um, I would say that that's a good way to start because if you do, even for as little as 30 days, do consistent learning, build a project, put notes, and at the end of the month, just read the notes that you that you had from that entire process. You can write a whole article about the whole process at the end of the month. So whilst it's easy to say tweet every day or post on LinkedIn every day, some of us have anxiety from engagements, really. Um, and it's easier to just keep track of what we're doing in bits and then look at it holistically. So more like your... Um, looking back and you're saying, okay, from the 1st of August to the 30th of August, I built this um, solution, I automated this report, and this, this is what I did on a daily basis. And then you create a full article on that. It's easier. Um, the second thing about storytelling and your process is some people work well with like individual projects, but in my case, um, I solidified my expertise in STEM. So I did a master's degree in analytics. And during that time, I wrote a white paper. So I was I was in my, my degree and I was working and I wrote a white paper with my colleague. That was the first time I ever wrote a white paper about, uh, it was actually on AutoML. And I felt like because I had someone else that we had the shared goal of writing a paper, I was more, um, let me use the Niger terminology. I was gingered, right, to follow through. And the, auto, the white paper is also like a documentation of everything we did. So take it in good faith. If you have to collaborate with someone, set a goal, meet with them from time to time. Over the years, I have worked with friends and like just open projects where um, we built like solutions on GitHub and things like that. And it's been collaborative work. Um, and I'm proud of the work. I'm proud to say I worked with XYZ person and we can tell the story together. We can post on LinkedIn together. So it, you don't have to walk alone. Your story does not have to be a, an individual story. It can be with other people. Um, the other thing you can do when it comes to... Uh, the other thing you can do when it comes to storytelling is you can, um, so when I joined my new role, I, I think I joined the space one time and I was talking about how I moved away from a tech company into a fashion company. It's a completely different landscape. Um, the, the hot pan I was in tech, in a tech company, it was a bit slowed down. I'm more on the business side than the technical side now. And so when you're on the business side, you need to document every little detail and I found that exhausting because I prefer to sit in front of a computer and write my code, right? So what did I do? I started creating voice notes of my work. It's basically what journalists do where um, I think journalists and lawyers, they, they take like transcripts of a case and then they record voice memos. And afterwards, they go back and listen. Um, sometimes they even transcribe the voice memos into text. You can do that as well. So in the process of building a project, if you think, you're not the kind of person that has the time to, or maybe, you know, sometimes as well, like Alain Raju and David was saying, I, I believe, um, the way you speak and the way you type is so different. And you also want to be like coherent. You don't want to use like big grammar, but at the same time, you want a flow. You want. Is that uh, my network? 
I think so. I, think I, I can hear you clearly. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Miriam. Oh, perfect. So, yeah. So, um, you can take voice notes, um, transcribe them in Microsoft Word or any solution that you prefer. And after taking the voice notes, there are so many generative AI tools out there that can help you um, improve your sentences. So if I said a sentence in Microsoft Word, I would have a Grammarly plugin. There's a free version and I would at least clean up my sentences to be more professional. You can also set the Grammarly to formal. So that way your sentences are like proper and yeah you sound like what you want to sound like basically so I think that's my uh, take on um, storytelling um, the other one on confidence and how to speak I think my friends that that are on this space will never believe me when I say that um, I'm a very shy person because I'm always disturbing them but truly 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 I'm very shy. Um, I prefer to do things like on my own. And I've met so many people in tech who have suffered from our um, lack of interest in like being the most out there person. Um, one of the things I found last year, there's a website called career.io. On this website, they have mock interviews from Uber. In short, any industry, there's a mock interview for like different jobs. No matter, this is not even tech specific now there's like different jobs mock interviews career.io and you sit in front of your computer and it does like a mock interview for you and gives you feedback one of the things I that has really helped me from using career.io is now I can describe concepts to a computer and tell if my mannerism was compelling enough if, it, if I sold myself how I want to tell myself, I get my feedback instantly and I take notes and I continue to improve. Um, if you feel like you don't want to talk to a computer because it's a bit monotonous, you can also do that exercise with someone who, um, that, and the thing is, I, I think that those of us in tech, we tend to think that people don't understand except they're in tech. But if you're in the analytics space and the data space, 90% of the things that you do, you would need to explain it in the most granular form to a non-technical person. So you can actually sit your friends down and say, you know what, I want to speak on something I did and I want you to understand it. Um, it could be a dashboard. You can say to them, what do you understand by this dashboard? And when they give you feedback, you can demonstrate to them exactly the point you were trying to drive. There's so many ways in which you can build that connection with selling your ideas to people and and this is not intent it doesn't mean that eventually you become an extrovert but it means that whenever you speak about your work you speak about it with a level of confidence like Olari Raji said as well one of the things that really stand out in the process of doing this is of documenting and also talking about your work is in that process you start to think of new ways in which you can improve um, I think the human mind is a mega DevOps system where you continue to iterate, you continue to build, and you continue to get better. Um, I think the final thing I uh, I was going to touch on, I forget what it, what it was, but when I remember, um, someone reminds me, please. I took notes. Let me check my notes. Um, okay, yeah. The idea of being a beginner forever. Um, I think here's the thing. I observe a lot on the timeline how there is this um, unclear understanding of who is a beginner and who is intermediate and who is an expert. Um, I don't consider my expert to myself an expert till tomorrow because I continue to see my I, I continue to meet people that inspire me. I have made friends with people who have been in this industry for 25, 30 years. But one thing always stands out to me being sure of what you know would always get you the respect. This will earn you the respect and the, I, I don't know how to put it now, it earns you your place at the table, right? So um, a beginner in any space, it varies genuinely. It varies. Um, you, you have to get to the point um, as you learn as well to develop enterprise knowledge um, especially for us in this ecosystem where we oh, we mostly end up either as consultants or um, within a domain. 
um, what makes you stand out in anywhere, whether as a consultant or as a domain expert, is your knowledge of that space. Um, so, for instance, I'm in the fashion space, and I spent the last year really understanding what it means to be in luxury fashion, um, what are the terminologies, the KPIs. So in luxury fashion, I would say I'm a beginner, but as a technical person, I would say I'm intermediate. Now, I wouldn't box myself and de deprive myself of opportunities because I have maybe created that echo chamber in my head that I'm, I have to be a beginner. Um, I would say that as time goes on, I continue to, because you, and that's the thing, it all comes together. It's a circle. Because you take track of, of your progress, you can look back and say, okay, compared to last year, I know X, Y, Z, right? And I can fulfill projects to a set, certain degree or percentage, let's say 70% unassisted, um, because now I understand what is expected of me. So, I, I would say it's very important to be strategic in your growth process. Less of the bubble of, oh, I want to learn every single thing and more of solution, having a solution mindset. What do you need to do to provide solution? Because I'll be honest with you. I mean, I make this joke all the time with David. Um, when I was recruiting for my role, there was my interview was on data bricks, like yeah, data bricks. And then I, my first day on the job, I saw Excel, and I was like, what? <laughs> and and it, it, at that point, I was uh, the first thing I thought to myself wasn't, oh, there was so much emphasis on data bricks. I want data bricks. What I said to myself was, there has to be a problem that I can use Excel to solve for this business. And a year down the line, yes, we are still. We're now getting to to the um, big, big, the big, uh, what's it called? Modern data platforms and things like that. It's a slow process, but even with Excel, we are transforming and we are making progress. So um, I leave you all with this point tonight. Um, please check out career.io. It's not sponsored. Um, I wasn't paid to say this, but it's been very helpful to me. Um, another thing I wanted to say about confidence, over the years I have watched um, lots of TED Talks and keynote speeches of different tech events, um, Microsoft, you name it, I listen. And whenever there's an event, I just, I listen to the keynote speech. I try to learn from the leaders, how they speak, their mannerisms. And yeah, it just, it creates an, a, a system in my mind where I think, okay, when I speak, I need to speak a certain way to get people's attention. Because if you're talking for 15, 30 minutes, you need to maintain um, everyone's attention in the room. But thank you all for letting me speak. I wish you all success in all your endeavors. Thank you. Wow. Thank you so much, uh, Miriam. Wow. Some people are already watching me that um, you have Queen's English. But me, my own English, na local. So, uh, 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 you know, I take that. I take that. But we appreciate the, you know, contribution. You mentioned, you, you know, you, you touched base on a lot of important topics. How you started improving, you know, voice note, voice memo, and how it can be transcribed and, you know, turn up to something. Today, we have many tools that can actually change, help you transcribe your voice notes to, you know, to text, and you can start from there. You know, another is, you know, creating a trust somewhere daily on what you do about that project. So you are working on a project, you started, you start a thread. Today, you had issues, you couldn't fix it. The next day, you had issues, you couldn't fix it. Just go and be adding it to the thread, you know. And when you are done with the project, you realize that even the experience you had while working on that project, you've forgotten. But when you go back to, you know, those threads, you know, which are like... Uh, Point, learning point, you can write a story out of that because when you check those major main summaries, you can then write a full story about your experience working on that project. Cool. Um, you you also share very good uh, uh, URL, URL with us, which I will employ people to also try, explore. Personally, myself, I will also go there and see, um, you know, because we all need it. You mentioned that we are beginners. Um, you know, yeah, you are you are a senior somewhere, but you are also beginner to another level. The next level you are aiming at, you know. Um, so the, this doesn't refute the fact that you grow in your skill, but also you are beginner to another niche as well. 
I got a new project to still work on. You know, today I was in David Abudia. I'm like, oh, more. This thing plenty. The guy said, oh, more. We are just shouting, oh, more, you know, in the DM. Because we know uh, this new task is also a beginner. And we are more or less a beginner there who is now learning this new skill, new, new tools, and growing, you know, day by day with them. So thank you so much for, you know, sharing detailed experience as to, you know, how you are evolving today in your job role, building confidence, you know, managing the business side, which requires more of documentation and you know, even than the technical side that you initially, you know, uh, wanted to do, but how you are balancing that and, and coping. That's amazing. Thank you so, so much. I'm going to pass this to, I think at this point, I will have to limit uh, the numbers of comments we could take because of time, but yes, we have, I, I think I should actually find something to 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 still um, safeguard myself because I'm bringing on top uh, on this show now. See me, intro tech bro. So I need to find a bulletproof to just guide myself. See me, over to you. Can you hear me? Affirmative, affirmative. Why do you assume that you are a serious person? We know you are not serious. <laughs> let me just make a hear me. Let us hear the me first now. <laughs> well, um, <laughs> why did you do that now, David? <laughs> All right. Uh, well, I think I'm also like close to you, uh, Miriam, right? Um, uh, I just decided to request Mike. And don't worry, I'll be serious this time around, right? Um, so storytelling, yeah, I think I may have a, a thing or two. So, um, just like Miriam, I haven't been, you know, exactly contributing in a while, and these days I just come on Twitter to, <laughs> to just to just have a good laugh. So, um, storytelling, right? Um. I think that for for every data person, right, you, you need to understand that communication is a big part of what you do, right? Um, in fact, you, there are certain places, there are certain things that you cannot do. There are um, audiences that you cannot face without being able to to communicate. Literally, if you go on 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 Google and you just search, or maybe on GPT and just search for top skills for a data person, right? Communication must always be there. That's literally what you do. So it's not even a question of whether you're introvert or not, right? And more often than not, right? A lot of us try to claim, hey, I'm introvert. Is a lie, you are not introvert, yeah, you know? Um, so uh, it's not a question of, of whether you're introverted or not right? It's a question of you just have to do it, right? And if you don't, I don't think there's any senior level person here, right, who doesn't have to talk to C-level executives, who doesn't have to, um, especially if you want to be really good at what you do. Now, imagine yourself in a team of maybe um, three other analysts and you know, you bring you you come up with a really interesting solution and they ask you, hey, how did you come about this, right? You have to have to communicate, so it's it's a very very important part part of what um, of what we do, right? So it's just as important as you learning SQL as you learning Power BI or whatever it is that you you you, you learn, right? Um, so for example, I'll, I'll give my you know my own track record how it worked for me. So I've tried pretty much everything, like literally everything. And I'm talking from, I, I think Mary mentioned journaling, right? I, I have some diaries, um, you know, um, where I literally just document. I write like a roadmap. I draw like a, a roadmap of my learning, right? I put a, I basically like a, like a schema, right, of my uh, learning process, right? So how I... Um, how I got into storytelling um, or being really good, pretty good at, at doing this is just by by doing it, right? And I think everybody has said that now. So what I did was I just started writing, you know. And here's the interesting thing about writing. It doesn't have to be a very long article, right? It doesn't have to be a very complex thing. It could just be something as simple as writing on bookmarks in Power BI, 
or writing a, a, a select statement, right? So what it does for you, it just helps you to, um, it puts you in a, in a position of a third party to see what, how you represent information, right? Basically, you're sitting as an audience of yourself when you write and you're looking at it and you ask yourself, when I read this, does this make sense? You know, so um, also one of the things that I did is I literally learned how to speak, right? How to, um, basically how to communicate. I literally learned how to do it. Um, I used to go on YouTube, watch TED videos. I knew how to structure conversations, um, especially because when I started out, um, I, at least my first corporate job, it was with a consulting firm, right? A training and consulting firm. So um, I trained, I had to do a lot of teaching data science, like um, any, literally end to, end to end data science from Excel all the way to machine learning, um, all the way to uh, machine learning on cloud, Azure machine learning and all that stuff, right? So engaging somebody for, and I'm talking about teaching six hour classes, like literally from like nine to like 5 p.m. You know, so how you engage people, you have literally, you have to learn how to do that. So you can go on TED, right? TEDx on YouTube, learn how to communicate, right? I, I think somebody mentioned about how to engage you I can engage anybody in a 30 minutes conversation, right? Um, it, it, it's, there, there, it, there's a psychology to it. There's a point, you know, learning when to raise your voice, learning when to keep your voice calm, when learning when to, uh, be, you know, ask questions. There's an entire psychology to it. And you can learn it the same way you learn Power BI, right? I, lit I do not like to talk. Um, I like to maybe... You know, I'm, I'm open to like text and, you know, but more often than not, I'm by, almost, almost always by myself. But when there's, there's a need for me to communicate, when there's a need for me to interact, I, I always do it really well. And I'm not even like trying to be modest or anything. And I think one of the things that I also saw today was, um, you know, in terms of, um, you know, putting your, your, your articles out there, Right. So backstory, my first article was in 2019. I think I was a few days to graduation or a few days to like uh, finishing school 2019. My first article, I think it was on sentiment analysis or something, but it's right there on my Medium page. That was my first article. Now, that writing got me my first job, however toxic it was with some guy in Canada called, I cannot forgive that guy. That guy gave me PTSD. You know, um, but I mean, it did it did pay the bills. So you learn how to write. You can learn how to write, right? And Grammarly and all those guys makes it even easy for you to like write and all that. So you can learn. So one thing I, I want you to just know is that you can learn how to do these things the same way you learn how to how to learn Power BI. It's not so different, right? There's a template that you can follow. There's a template to it. You can go on TED videos. You can just search how to communicate. There are articles, there are, there are videos online that you can watch. By the time you watch 10 of those videos and you write one or two articles or you, you, know, you engage one or two persons in a conversation, right? you just find that you're, you're getting better at it. It's just the same way as you watch a Udemy video and then you learn how to communicate and, um, or you learn your Udemy video on how to import data in Power BI and then you go do it, it's literally exactly the same thing. It's not so different, right? That I can assure you, it's it's a skill, right? You can you can pick it up. And maybe it's even easier than learning SQL because I know people are always complaining about learning SQL on It's even easier than, I feel like it's easier than learning, learning SQL. Now the storytelling part, right? Um, one of the things you also need to understand is you need to understand your audience, right? You need to understand, um, you know, um, your your audience and why I see this is that different organizations have different ways by which they communicate information, right? Um, even though you're trying to bring them into the latest technology, it doesn't happen like that. Um, in even in the big in the big corps, right? And I'm talking about this from from experience. A lot of these guys do, you know, are built we've built. I, I think a number of us, you know, are built dashboards and then they say, yeah, we want to see it in PowerPoint, right? <laughs> All of that happens. So 
how you need to understand your your audience and whatever the medium of communication is whatever the medium of communication is you need to master that medium right so what i mean is you know the medium of communication is usually excel spreadsheets now i know you want to move them or migrate them to power bi or some latest tech out there but that's not going to happen in a day so you need to master the medium of communication you need to know um what catches their eyes right all of this you do by interacting with you know the people who consume your information and more often than not um also one of the things i also notice is maybe in the earlier phases of your career right you do things that you think do not matter you build tons of dashboards that nobody looks at right but as you grow as you learn how to communicate you then start to realize the things that matter you learn how to communicate the 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 things that matter let me put it that way you don't need to look for another english right so um literally I, I, all i'm just saying is that storytelling you can definitely learn how to you know how to communicate it's just communication right but different audiences you know um you know for example how i communicate how i would communicate on 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 this space would be quite different from if i was in a class you know trying to communicate a concept in sql right but the template is still the same, right? There are certain tones. In fact, it goes as much as there are certain tones that if your voice gives us certain tones or certain conversation or your voice sounds a certain way, people will start to doze off, right? Within, um, <laughs> there's a reason why you guys doze off within uh, with your lecturers, where one lecturer is teaching, two lecturers can teach the same thing. Half of the class will sleep in one and everybody's attentive in another, right? We don't know that this is exist, but a, a heavy chunk of it is psychological, right? Um, knowing how to, you know, project your voice, you how you stand, and I'm saying this from like a perspective of because you're a data person, right? You would speak to people on calls, you speak to people physically. All of this matters, right? So you need to like take it as an extra skill. So maybe as much as you're learning Power BI, it's a it's a skill that's very important. In fact. I think Gift was saying something today about, um, you know, he's never gotten a rejection letter in a while. He always gets like maybe third, third stage, you know, whatever will happen, will happen, will not. But I've had the same experience, right? I've had the same experience. And I tell you this, one of the very important things is communication, like literally, right? Communication, being able to engage a recruiter also comes, you know, from being how you, how you sound, you know, your posture, there's some certain ways you just sit on a chair or you stare at somebody on a Zoom call and you just do that. This guy is clueless. So all of that uses confidence in some way. It's all part of your story storytelling strategy. It's all part of your storytelling kit, learning the, how to engage people and all of that stuff, right? So um, put it as a skill, right? As you're learning Power BI, put it somewhere at the top. Um, you know, you learn how to write engage engaging um, content as you're learning how to write SQL, you know, how to format your queries and all, you're also learning how to speak. Put it as a side quest, not a side quest, just as important because it's data, right? It's not like um, you have to communicate to stakeholders. This is what is happening. They are seeing some KPIs they don't understand, right? They're asking you to explain, you're, you're saying M, 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 um, um, you know, all of that, you know, just gives up some kind of, um, you know, displeasure or the some kind of lack of confidence, and that's kind of that kind of also extends from them to you, where they don't believe what you're what you're saying, right? So, um, put it as a skill that can be. It's a skill that can be learned. Everybody can learn it, right? Literally, every single person, right, can learn how to communicate, whether it's written, and you don't have. To, you're not trying to be an expert. So here's another thing: you're not trying to be an expert. You're just learning how to do it and being able to do it. That's just what it is. You're not in competition with anybody. But it's very important. There are certain levels of your um, career that you cannot get to without communication, especially in the data space. Take it anywhere, right? Whether you want to be a consultant or you want to, you're not going to be a mid-level except you just want to be a drone. Um, you know, you just want to stay one place. At, uh, but if you want to progress, you, you have to learn how to do these things, right? So uh, I think that's pretty much it from, from me. Wow. wow. Quick question. Is it the semi 
that we know that is behind this mic because people are already commenting that would be a handicap or AI. AI. Are you, are you giving are you giving the mic to ChatGPT at the back end? <laughs> wow, <laughs> wow. <laughs> see, you know, see, guys, you know, see, see, we promise and the NSA is going to be serious with us. And you know, see, know your stuff. As you see people on Twitter, that and that is so good that we're after each other's growth. You know, yeah, I like the fact that Simi's regular personality they just to make everything lively. Emi or Moju project, Emi or Moju data, come and do data. But Simi, we dropped some lamba for us and you help us, you know, laugh and then you know we catch the crews needed. So, but much more important, you see, this guy is loaded and he was really giving us. Um, um, those things. Uh, while I take Jerry and we could just call it a day, I want to, I'm trying to pull up a meeting I did last month. That meeting was a group meeting and one thing that we practice that I've learned about storytelling in our practice today, in my team, I just, it's an open thing because it's a skill that we've even done a session on about storytelling is whenever you are making a presentation, even if your presentation is three minutes, or five minutes. Tell a story because people, when you present something, it's only one thing that they will take a word away, they might not learn anything. So we always use a story to eat the point from beginning and then make your presentation. So even if they, lo they are lost in your presentation, the story can stick. Story always stick. And so what we do in regular meetings, yeah, for example, uh, this guy, our colleague, was making a presentation to an entire group that I was there. And the group, the meeting was to showcase how we are collaborating, we are working all together. And he used an analogy about a story about Roman Empire. Um, and he talked, he mentioned some, you know, generations, you know, where there was a king, I think it was in Rome, and there's no water, there's no river. And every day he always eats fresh meat. <laughs> I mean, fresh fish every day. And there's no river. Where we have fresh fish is, let's say, three towns away from that person. And if you go, there's no car that day. If you go on by even us, it will take, it might take, it will take days. It was established that that journey will take, let's say, two or three days. Me, I'm just summarizing because I don't know how to tell that story. But he told the story in about a minute, less than a minute. And that hit the point. And let me let me continue my song, my summary. And that, and this king, because of his reign, he always eat fresh water fish every day. Meanwhile, to give him a daily fresh water fish, it takes it, it will take like three days to get it to him. And how was he able to, you know? I wish we no longer be a fresh water because you took that thing uh, today before you can get it back to that village or that town. It take three days. You know, the kind of fish he prefer. And I was able to do that. And on all those connecting villages, they have people established there. And those people only need to maybe run about 10 meters. Constantly, that's their work because it's so powerful. When they get the fish from the village, you run and give to the next person. Person run, give to the next person. Run. Before you know what's there in the morning, it's still that same very day and that afternoon, that fish will get there. And he just used it as a, an example of how division of labor help get the impossible done. When people come together to collaborate, just on that 55 seconds that they made that story, they move on. Uh, why we're on this call today, show you the effort we are committing to ensure that we work together, collaborating. Um, that story alone has already shown us that we need to work together and it's, it's all you can achieve you know, when you work together. Everything was this. So, you know, even whenever I'm going to, I'm leading something, I always look for a story that is reflective enough that I know and is genuine or, you know, um, that I could use to... You know, to talk about you know that that's this closer in seconds that is closer to that um you know team that I'm to present on, then I can then go ahead because at the end that story might be what sticks, you know, to people's mind and not even the long presentation you have present you know you have prepared. But overall, it's just hopefully you know in the coming session we could host uh, people who. You know, whose presentation we even start with storytelling, tell a story of the importance of storytelling, and we can then, you know, storytelling in a meeting, we could call that one, that, you know, uh, that title, and, and share full tips and examples, deliveries 
examples so that you can pick things and see how it works. So thank you all. Uh, I think I have Jerry is the last person I'm here to you know take um comment from, but I still want to use this time to start appreciating people you know who have stayed on this call, you know, who have contributed, you've all contributed in different means, even staying on uh, and joining means huge uh to us all. Okay, Jerry, um what to you. Okay, I guess the the, the uh, network is you right there. But uh, one key lesson to take out is you can learn it. You can, pra you know, you just, you know, practicing a lot of key takeaway. Thank you all that have summarized this in the charts. I went through all these things, you know, and I can't even fathom, you know, if I'm able to bring out all these lessons. So going through the chat alone, you catch up with as many tips summarized by Tina, summarized, you know, call out by David Abu. Oh, David, your hand is up. Uh, yeah, I get I guess uh, after that, we then we call it up. Okay, David. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if Jerry will still come up, but hopefully let's see if he comes up. Um, I remember in Deep Brown then, every Thursday, so if you're a manager here, um, you can add that to your team. Um, every Thursday, each one, um, each one of us will always do a presentation. Every Thursday, 8 to 8.20. So it's called a Picha Kucha presentation. Um, it's spelled pichacha. Um, it's pronounced pichacha, but it's spelled pichacucha. Um, it is twenty slide for twenty seconds each. So when you create a slide, look at it from a perspective of each slide. Everything you want to say on that slide must be twenty seconds. So you are going to time your PowerPoint that each slide apply to all twenty seconds. So. Now, any topic you want to talk about, let's assume you want to talk about um, um, politics, economy, anything, social media, anything. Um, it's not about data. It's not even just to be about data or anything consulting, but just any topic. It has, and one thing is that you will not use words. You will use picture. Only picture. And that picture is just, it has to be only one picture. And that one picture must talk about the major thing that you want to say in that slide. So that was one of the things I, I used to learn um, how to present. So most of the time, you know, we have to write in words so that we'll have an idea of what we want to say. But um, David Brown or D. Brown as a whole taught us a reverse mode, which is, since picture speaks louder than words, use picture to talk about within 20 seconds about everything. So within six minutes, 40 seconds, you have gone through 20 slides without you knowing. So that also helps us to sell faster. So when you're going out to talk to people or you want to do a presentation with people and they say, oh, you just have only five minutes, you can deliver a full presentation in five minutes i just wanted to point that out thank you david this is this is really is a really cool practice uh, i argued with my team you know last year when we were given the opportunity to talk and then it was just three minutes per team for that presentation and i was like uh during the retrospective that that three minutes was little everybody just jump at me i said that three minutes was not they just jump at me uh, a lot can be done you know, it wasn't five minutes, too, and they were saying that uh, even five minutes is a lot, it's much more than enough. Eh? Five minutes. And that's it. Today, one of my biggest lessons on time management is the short video I'm creating. That thing is teaching me a lot. A lot can be done in 60 seconds because I have to put all my message and content into 60 seconds. So that makes me go back and say, oh, no, I will say it this way. No, there's no need to say even if why am I putting even if let me remove both of them? Let me just say this, you know, uh, it's just by also by practice. But thank you for sharing that concept with us. Of course, um, th there's a lot that can be learned to practice in that perspective. Okay, Jerry, are you still able to speak? Otherwise, um, let's just call this a day, two hours, 30 minutes. That's a lot. I mean, it, it, it means a lot. All right, so Jerry, um, since you are still unable to talk, you can always drop your content in the chat. People will also be able to see it. Once again, 
I really appreciate it. and thank you everyone you know that you know co-host with me you know even without being you know uh where earlier like Tina you know David jump on these all the speakers Nina that contributed people listening in you know Obina data engineer you know gift engaging and passing your feedback in the comment goes a long way and makes it more valuable you know sharing your own feedback about it as well I I sincerely appreciate this we will not stop uh, one thing is we cannot always guarantee that it's every week, uh, but um, it might also come from me. The next one can come from anyone in the community. Oh, guys, I think this also topic is important. Just all of us jumping at it and also being there, you know, learning, contributing, and, and you know, uh, making everything go well. So thank you all. I appreciate. So bye for now.